Welcome back to the Quick Speed Shop. I'm Josh. Today it's springtime. It's a little chilly, but we got something we're going to work on here. My dragster. It's all done for now, but what I want to do is take this around to shows this summer. And to do that, I need some kind of trailer to take it on. If you haven't seen this, you're going to go back and check it out. This is a 50s style dragster I built. It's kind of buried in junk here right now, but it's a Model T frame, Buick nail head, white wall slicks, uh, wide five wheels, all period correct stuff, built like 1956 time frame. It's got a patina Model T body, patina door skin for the top here, and super awesome. It runs-ish, it runs okay, but it's uh, loud, makes fire, pretty trick. So, so I want to be able to take this around on uh, the shows, like I said, tote behind my uh, old trucks and show up at events. So we need to build a trailer for this thing. So what I have here is a military trailer. I'll tell you about this axle in a second. But this is like one of those 70s, 60s, 70s. Um, if you've seen them, they have like a pickup box with like angled wheel wells and stuff. I'm not sure exactly what they're called. Oh, wait, we got a data plate. Yeah, they're like ton and a quarter trailers, I think. Something like that. Yeah, payload. Total of 13, yeah. Anyways, they made them. They come. This is an earlier one with the split rims, 16-inch split rims. And I bought this on the side of the road. A guy had it for sale for a couple hundred bucks. Unfortunately, it was in the weeds, and I didn't realize they had butchered the axle. This should have a straight-across axle, and they, they ride pretty high. And somebody cut the axle off, welded this tubing up and you know it seems beefy who knows if it's straight but anyways I bought this with the intention of using it for the dragster frame and unfortunately it's too narrow and it's too short and the way the the springs are mounted they're riveted on which is super cool I love the details all this and I wanted to maintain that but it's going to take too much work to make it work and it's not wide enough and these wheels are, I don't want to run split rims and stuff, and they've got a real, they got a real nice full floating hub, but the, you know, the, I, I don't want to deal with these wheels. Essentially what I need is a trailer that is 12 feet long and five and a half feet wide. So factor in this here, this is a, I believe it's a Dexter, yeah, Dexter axle from Indiana. This is another one of those why trash it when you can stash it moments. I took this. I was at the junkyard, I want to say at least 10 years ago, and there was a motor home, a travel trailer trailer that was wrecked, and it had this axle under it. And I spent, I think, two hours pulling this out in the junkyard, dragging it all the way back, and this is at least 10 years ago, and then I stashed it. Buried under junk, I didn't uh, film digging it out, but I had this in my back bay, completely buried under junk, buried under other ends. It was a disaster getting it out. It took me like an hour to get it out. And anyways, this is a Dexter, I believe it's a 3,500 pound axle. It's got brakes, leaf springs, a whole nine yards. I paid $75 for it like 10 years ago. To buy this axle right now, I think with the springs and everything, you're looking at probably close to 500, 600 bucks. The good news is, it is the perfect width for a dragster trailer. Perfect. And the awesome part about it is, it's a drop axle. You see the drop in it there? It's going to make the trailer ride super low to the ground, which is what you want. A lot of these early dragster frames, or uh, trailers I should say, you'd see they were super low to the ground. A lot of times they had no suspension, the axle was just welded right to the trailer, and it made it ride really low. And I've taken a picture of an old Dragon Master trailer that I want to try to replicate. Let me bring it up on my telephone. Hold on one second. Right here, check this out. Oh, we got a glare. This is a, what I want to... Here, let's go inside. Right here, this is a, what I want to replicate. See that Dragmaster trailer? And it rides low. It's open deck. And it's going to be perfect for this dragster. So... This is just the start of the video. It's probably going to take me a couple, few days to film it. But right now, we got the axle, we got the dragster, we got a design. So let's build a trailer. Okay, I got rid of the military trailer and got the axle down on the ground. I put some wheels and tires on it. These are smaller than I'm going to be running on the trailer, but they're approximate 
uh, height wise maybe about an inch short they're uh, uh, 165 firestones which are narrow and tall I'll probably run like a 205 75 15 trailer tire which is approximately this size so the key to this dropped axle in this trailer is to get it low to the ground as possible so it makes loading the dragster which is pretty low uh, easy as possible so I've got this kind of mocked up where it would be with this angle iron obviously there would be hangers so it'd be just a little bit farther from it but right now like if the angle iron was the bottom of the framework showing 12 inches off the ground and here you're like six so it's going to be kind of low but this is how this trailer would have ridden it probably wouldn't have had tires much taller than this on it on the on the mobile home trailer or the uh, camper trailer i should say so they it rode pretty low to begin with so it's not too bad and i'm not going to be hauling this thing all over hell's half acre so i'm not really concerned about a lot of action it's still got a little bit of a scrub line it's still got a little bit of a scrub line the tire goes flat it'll be down there but this is really going to be awesome it's going to be right low to the ground and like i showed you that dragon mass drag master trailer what i think i'm going to do is get some two by three i think uh box tubing okay it's a couple days later bam check this out i've got steel so what we're going to do to make this trailer is we're going to use two by three 11 gauge or eighth wall tubing and make it out two by three and i've got the perimeter of the frame laid out here it's 12 feet long it, it really only needed to be like 11 and change, but it was easy just to get the prime steel cut in half at 12 feet. So that's what it's going to be. And it'll give me a list a little bit extra length. Uh, actually, I can put my Model A coupe on here too if I want to ever tow it on there. So I've got this laid out and I got it to the width. It's 65 and three quarters center to center, which is the same width as the axle. 65 and three quarters center to center here on the... Uh, axle pads so the frame rail will be right here and then it'll be little fenders but uh, i've already cut the first piece of tubing i've got this thing leveled up on jack stands all the way my floor is wonky but i've leveled it up i got some spacers under this one and it's level both ways and uh, what i did is i cut the front piece here and clean up the edges where i'm going to weld i'm using a piece of scrap steel to hold it flush and we're just gonna, I'm just going to measure corner to corner to make sure that it is square. I'm going to tack the front. And somewhere in the back here, my rear cross member is going to hang down under the trailer, probably about three inches back, because I think I want to drill these and sleeve them for a, a pipe to, to hinge the ramps on. So I'll probably put this back here about three or uh, six, eight inches, something like that. And that is going to... Uh, be on the bottom like this the trailer i'm sorry i should i should tell you the trailer is upside down right now i'm going to build it upside down and then um, this is going to stick down so ever it'll have uh you know it won't hit the frame rails on the ground it would hit this on the ground first if i had to but that's the rear cross member so i want to i want to get this tacked up first get squared up i already broke the bank on the steel i went to the steel yard got bought out that i usually go to and the new plate prices were absolutely insane it was way too much money for the steel, but I'm in the time crunch, and it was there, but it was... I could almost bought a brand new trailer for what it's going to cost me to build this thing. Ridiculous, but... Learned my lesson, not going back there ever again. Unless they straighten it out, so... Uh, let me uh, measure this corner to corner. I'm just going to tack this front cross member up here. Like I said, it's upside down. And then uh, we'll get some more pieces cut out here and laid out and get the basic framework done on it. Okay, I've got the front tacked in. I tacked on the bottom piece here, which the trailer's upside down, like I said, so that's the bottom piece there. And I've laid the inner rails in just here, just loosely, and it gives me, this is the width for the front wheels, uh, that's like 63 and 5 eighths inside to inside, and I need about 61 or so tire to tire, so it's gonna be tight on the front tires. And I went and I measured my Model A coupe, and the Model A Coupe is barely going to fit in the trailer. Like, the tires will be touching the sides. It's about, like, an eighth inch of spare. But uh, I don't really plan on hauling that car around on this trailer. But it will go on there. Just in, if I ever need to, it will go on. It'll just barely, the tires will be right up rail to rail. But it'll fit both. Uh, the Dragster's got a Model A axle that's narrow, that's uh, dropped. So it narrowed the track width up enough work works good to this. 
So let me go back here and show you what I got working. So the rear tires on the dragster will hit these rails. So I want to kick them in the width of the tubing. I need 38 inches in between the back tires. So I actually want to kick the rails in to that height. I'm going to bring them out two foot here and cut a 45 and uh, transmission here so the back tires the drags will sit here in the wider pocket and then they'll transition to 45 and I'll box it in and then it'll go to the other rail and go like that. All right it's the next day or the next night and check it out the trailer's coming together so I was over at my friend's house Jordan and we cut out some diamond plate with a plasma CNC it's a diamond plate I had and it's a little beefy, but it's 3 16 These are going to be the tire treads where the drags or tires are going to sit. Oh, I should show you this. So I had, like I said, I had to step the rails in for the slicks in the back. So I just uh, Z-cut the, uh, pretty much Z'd the rails like you would lower a frame on like a Model A. Z'd it here so the rear rails are wide enough to accommodate the slicks. And then I've got this diamond plate, which I'm going to weld on here in a second. For the back tires here, so once again, the trailer is upside down. This is just clamped on here for mock-up, but the tires will go through the channel here of the rails. And the trailer I wanted to replicate there, the Dragmaster trailer, they had all diamond plate here, but steel is horrendously expensive and it's heavy. So I'm going to use some uh, five-quarter deck boards to make the planks in the middle for the tires to run on, but the dragster will sit on steel both sides, dive steel diamond plate, and then just roll on the wood. Now working on this trailer, I got thinking, I don't have a small open deck trailer to use. I just got my big car trailer. And this is going to be cool being like an open deck dragster trailer. But honestly, I'm only going to pull a dragster around once in a great while when I want to go to like a show or something with it. And the rest of the time, the trailer is just going to sit there unused. And truth be told, I've got a lot of money in this already. Like, the steel yard boned me on the cost of steel. Did I say that earlier? I might have. I can't remember. Anyways, they charged me way too much for the steel, so you're looking at like $1,100 in steel. Plus the axle, plus the wiring harness, plus brake lights and tail lights and stuff. I'm going to have plus tires, which are $160 a piece. I'm going to have like, I don't know, over $1,500 in this trailer. That's almost what you can buy like a tractor supply like six by 10 trailer for. So I got thinking, I've got a five and a half by 12 trailer that's way more heavy duty than what you can buy, but it's open deck so I can't use it for anything. So I'm actually gonna put some crossbars in and I'm gonna put a, a wooden deck in the center that's gonna be flush with the top. So that you'll still have the drive on rails, but then there's gonna be wood in the center. So I can use this as a like a small equipment trailer when I'm not using it for the dragster and that way and I can use it to go to swap meets or whatever so this will fulfill the need of me needing a small to mid-sized trailer and it'll be super handy and super beefy haul the dragster and haul other stuff so I'm going to change my design just a little bit put some cross pieces in so I can plank the center of this as well and um I could even remove the center deck boards when I want to strictly go to a show and have the thing look completely like an old school trailer. I could take the center deck out. I probably won't do that. I'll probably just leave the wood in it and still have the drive on thing. Like it is what it is. It'll, it'll be fine and it'll keep some protection underneath the car. But anyways, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this still the drive on action, but it's also going to be functional as a utility trailer when I need it for that. So I'm just going to burn on these diamond plate pieces real fast here. I don't want this video also to be like 17 hours long, so I'm going to skip a lot of the welding and like, you know, weld stuff together. I'll weld these plates on, and then after that, I think I'm going to make a front cross member to tie the tongue into. I'll, I'll weld that in, and then uh, I think we'll get the axle over here. I've got some new mounts to mount that. We'll mount the axle up on, put the uh, little pieces on the bottom for where the wood's going to attach. And then think about getting the thing out and trying to switch it over or flip it upside, the right side up. I'll, I'll do all the welding on the bottom first, so then once I swip, flip it, it'll be uh, ready to topside weld. Okay, I'm getting the axle mocked up here, and I bought, 
a retractor supply company. They got just like a shackle kit here that comes with the new shackles and bolts and hangers. And I've already got the front mounted on. So this the springs mount solid in the front and then they got the shackle in the back. I went and I biased the axle to the rear um, two feet. So I've got the axle seven feet from the front of the trailer and then it's five feet to the rear. The dragster, the engine is gonna sit right about here so it's just gonna be just ahead of the axle. But when I use this for other things, um, I didn't want the axle back too far and have too much tongue weight, but I needed some rear bias so the thing didn't, with well, the dragster didn't get all squirrely with too much, uh, uh, with the axle too far ahead. You'll see a lot of early 50s trailers, they put the axle like right in the center. And they, tur they, tore it, they towed these cars and you know, back then they weren't towing as fast as people do now. Like this thing, people po tow like 80 miles an hour crazy on the highway. But back then, you know, they were on with 40s, 50s cars towing on slower roads. But I'm sure those trailers handled squirrely because the axle was right in the center. And uh, I don't know if they did it for for like balance of the trailer or what or they just did it. But I pushed the axle back to help the thing handle better. The last thing you want to do is have the trailer get too much t uh, tail weight on it and get out of control on you. So I've already got the front tacked in. What I wanted to show you was this, the shackle inclination on the back here. So I just got the shackle just hanging in here. And right now the suspension is unloaded, you know, all the weights off the spring. And if you just put the shackle straight up and down when the suspension is unloaded, the shackle could go either way, depending on what's happening, like the articulation or something. And you don't want one to go one way and one to go the other way and have the thing get bound and like shackle bound weird so i'm going to weld these on with the inclination of the spring to the rear to start so that way when it's even unloaded the shackles can't go like past center and go the other way so i'll just pick a measurement like an angle like that and then i'll draw a line on the frame weld both these tabs onto the frame and then uh you know so when the suspension is actually loaded it'll actually go down like about that something like that so the, sh the shackle will work backwards but I'll stick it on right about there on both sides and then uh, the, pretty much the axle will be mounted. I have some new bushings in here because these bushings are, are loose. I got new plastic bushings for the springs. These are 1,750 pound springs. So that adds up to what, 17 times 2, 3,500. 3, yeah, 3,500 pound springs all together and the 3,500 pound axle. So with the drag, so the trailer is probably going to weigh, I don't know, Six, seven hundred pounds with the axle, and then you got the dragsters, probably another like twelve hundred, thirteen hundred pounds. So the tra trailer's only going away with the dragster, probably right around two thousand, twenty two hundred pounds. But I can put up to thirty five hundred pounds, or I'm sorry, I can put up to about I don't know three thousand pounds on it with the tires and the the spring rate when I use it for other things. So I'll just burn these on right quick, tack them on here, and get them on there, and then. I'll probably take the axle back off because I'm not going to be able to flip, flip this right side up by myself or uh, easily with all the weight on it. I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and burn the shackle mounts on both sides. And then um, I've got some like half by two or something or three quarter by two U-channel. I'm going to start stringing it across here and that'll make the little cross pieces for the lumber. And then uh, I got to add one more cross member up front for the tongue. We'll get the tongue figured out. All right, well, I ran out of time. I've got a whole bunch of crap going on, so I'm not going to be able to get the tongue on in this video. This is where it's at right now. Uh, got the shackles done. Got them uh, tacked on here. I'm going to take the axle loose and then burn all these pieces on here all the way. Got the shackles assembled and tacked on there, and everything works good. Um... I'll do that, weld them on. And off camera, just for the sake of speed, I'm gonna put the cross number here. I'm gonna weld the tongue out the front. And next time we'll come around and we'll do, flip the trailer upside the right way up and uh, finish the tongue and all that. But I'm gonna take this channel here and put it across for my braces for the lumber. So that'd be all right. Get the whole bottom of this buttoned up off camera here in between this video and the next trailer video. And then uh, next time we'll flip it up around right side up which i haven't even figured out how i'm going to do that yet but i'll figure it out somehow get it right side up get the boards for it get them fitted um do the tongue like i said i've got this tubing here the same tubing used to make the roll bar for the dragster 
I'd like to run a rail maybe one foot high or so around uh, three sides on the top uh, for a little rigidity to double up the outside rails, you know, make like a truss. And uh, when I use this for a flatbed trailer, I have a little bit of side action. This stuff's pretty light duty, so it's not going to add a lot of weight to the trailer, but it'll add a little bit of edging around so I can have some, some sides on it so it won't just be a complete flatbed. So that's where I'm going to leave it. I'll do all that stuff off camera. But uh, thanks for watching. Part one of the trailer build. Next time we'll finish it up. Uh, there might be another video in between these, and it's a kind of a surprise. So I'm going out to Ohio to get something. We can check that out. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Hey, you don't even got to watch the video. I mean, you don't have to, if you don't want to watch the video, just click, do me a favor and click play and let it play in the background so I can get some views up. The algorithm has been boning me on the last several videos. For some reason, the views are like super low and it's killing me. So even if you don't want to watch trailer builds or whatever, or concrete at the gas station, just do me a favor and hit the video. Let it run in the background, walk away, do something else. But I, I need to get some views up here because it's, uh, I don't know they what happened, but the views have been way down on the last like five or six videos, and I need to get them back up to where they were. So if you can do me a favor and do that, that'd be awesome. And in the meantime, I'll keep fabricating on the trailer, and we'll get it finished up in the next video. So until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time here fabricating at the Quick Speed Shop. I'm holding the microphone because I don't have a pocket right now. So there we go. We'll see you next time. So that's where I'm going to leave it. I'll do all that stuff off camera. But uh, thanks for watching. Part one of the trailer build. Next time we'll finish it up. Uh, there might be another video in between these, and it's a kind of a surprise. So I'm going out to Ohio to get something. We can check that out. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Hey, you don't even got to watch the video. I mean, you don't have to, if you don't want to watch the video, just click, do me a favor and click play and let it play in the background so I can get some views up. The algorithm has been boning me on the last several videos. For some reason, the views are like super low and it's killing me. So even if you don't want to watch trailer builds or whatever, or concrete at the gas station, just do me a favor and hit the video. Let it run in the background, walk away, do something else. But I, I need to get some views up here because it's, uh, I don't know they, what happened, but the views have been way down on the last like five or six videos, and I need to get them back up to where they were. So if you can do me a favor and do that, that'd be awesome. And in the meantime, I'll keep fabricating on the trailer, and we'll get it finished up in the next video. So until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time here fabricating at the Quick Speed Shop. I'm holding the microphone because I don't have a pocket right now. So there we go. We'll see you next time.